Praise the Lord, everybody. We welcome you back to get a word from the word of God. And I'm happy that you're here. All scripture will be from the King James Version of the Bible. Now, I'm going to attempt to do an in-depth study of Romans chapter 5. And you may say, why Romans chapter 5? Well, as we get into this, and I really encourage you to definitely read Romans chapter 5. I have been reading and studying this particular chapter now for the last several weeks. It is so much in that one in this one chapter and so many things have really touched my heart like I, I i just can't explain it any better like there's just so much information in this chapter and i want to share it with you we're going to do this in installments of course this will be volume one and we're just going to basically give you an appetizer today we're not going to give you Nothing long and drawn out. We're just going to give you an appetizer. Just give you a taste of where we're going. So let's uh, let's quickly uh, go to the book of Romans chapter 5 verse 1. And I will be putting the scriptures up on the screen for your convenience. And it reads, therefore being justified by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, just in this, that one verse, it's so much in there. And if you really read it and understand it, it will, it will cause you tears to flow down your face. It'll cause you to cry out to God. It'll cause you to go into worship because we're justified by our faith. Now, that word justified means to declare one righteous. God declares us righteous by our faith. Because of our faith in Jesus Christ, who was God Almighty, we have peace. Meaning harmony, security, safety, prosperity, and rest. Because of our faith in Jesus Christ. Let me read it again. Therefore, being justified, meaning to declare one righteous. We're not righteous because of the things we do. We're right. We become righteous because of our faith. Our complete reliance on Jesus Christ and our faith in him. Our complete trust in him. And I'm going to prove to you in the next verse why it ain't about works. Now, works are good. But just good works in itself is not going to get any of us into heaven. I just made it very clear here. Paul made it very clear. We are justified by faith. The Bible also says the just shall live by faith. That means the righteous will live by faith. So it's our faith in Jesus Christ is what causes us to be righteous. You can't make yourself righteous. Some people make themselves righteous in their own eyes and you're only deceiving yourself. But we are made righteous by our faith in Jesus Christ. And because of that, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. It's all because of Jesus' sacrificial death that we can, and our acceptance of that and us repenting of our sins and following God and following his word. We now have peace. I don't have to worry about dying and going to hell because my faith is in Jesus Christ, who is my savior. He's my safety net. He's my deliverer. There's no day. I'm, I'm no longer in eternal danger now. Remember. The wages of sin brings forth death, but the gift of God is eternal life through who? Jesus Christ. So my faith in Jesus Christ because of his sacrificial death and his resurrection, I have peace with God. I'm, I, there's no need for me to fear death. So when I die, I already know where I'm going. 
because my soul and my spirit is at peace because of I accepted him because of the way I'm living my life on a daily basis. If you are terrified of leaving here and death scares you to death and, oh, I just don't want to die. I want to live till I'm 105. Like, why do you, no actual believer should fear death? We, we shouldn't. A true Bible believing Christian should not fear death. Actually, death should be considered our friend. Because to be present, because to be absent from the body, the Bible says, is to be present with the Lord. Paul said, I would rather be with him. But because right now y'all need me, I'm here. But I would rather be with the Lord. <laughs> he even he said it many times, I'd rather be with him. But he said, but because of you're, you're in need of me teaching you and guiding you, I still need to be here. I still got work to do. But when he knew his work was over, he said, look, the time of my point in time has come. I have kept the faith. I, 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 I've done what I've done what God called me to do. Now I'm ready to go home and be with the Lord. So there's there's no reason for any child of God to fear death. No reason whatsoever, because you have peace with God through Jesus Christ. Let me read Titus and then I'm going to be finished. Titus chapter three, verses three through seven. It says, for we ourselves also were, and I and Paul make it very clear here, were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. This describes me to a T. I don't know about you. I can speak for myself. I was foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts, did that a whole lot, living in malice, envy, hateful, and hating other people. That describes me to a T. But I like what the next verse says. But after that, the kindness and love of God, our Savior, that's Jesus Christ, toward man appeared not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Thank God for your kindness, Lord. Thank you for your love and for saving mankind. You've given us a way out. I'm going to read that. Verse again, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration. See, when you, when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, there is a change. There is a washing. His blood that he, that he sacrificed washes away our sins and there is a regeneration. That means there's a rebirth. There's a rebirth, there's a transformation that takes place. If you find yourself continuing to do the same things you did prior to being saved, then you, you're not saved. If, you're, if there hasn't literally been change, true change, the Bible says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. If there hasn't been any change, then you're probably not saved. I'm sorry, I just got to keep it real for you. By regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Next verse. Which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. That being justified by his grace, meaning unmerited favor, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Let me go back up to the top and start again at Titus Three, verse three. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after that, the kindness and the love of God, our Savior, toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy. He saved us 
by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is just volume one of an in-depth study of Romans chapter five. I said this would just be an appetizer. There are more verses to go and I'm going to enjoy going through these verses along with you. And I believe you're going to get a lot out of it. Um, you could still read it on your own. I can't seem to go to I can't seem to move beyond chapter five to, to chapter six because there's so much meat in chapter five. There's so much to chew on. So much to take in. It's just that chapter alone will have you in tears if you literally allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you. You will find yourself in tears. You will find yourself praising and worshiping God once you read those verses because it's just so much there. And I'm so grateful for the shedding blood of Jesus Christ for my sin. Thank you, Lord, for shedding your precious blood for my sins. Someone who wasn't even worth it. I don't feel like I'm worth it, but you said I am worth it because you were willing to die. You gave up your throne. You came down from heaven and put yourself in a woman, in a virgin named Mary in her stomach and allowed yourself to be born a human being. You stripped off your own glory. And you served and you loved and you preached and you taught and you saved and you healed and, and performed all kind of miracles. But the ultimate thing is that you died for my sins. And on the third day, you arose from the dead and went back to the father for me and not only me, for the entire world. There's no greater love ever. And there could be no greater love than what you did for us. And I thank you for it. This will conclude our first volume of an in-depth study of Romans chapter 5. I hope that you will continue as we go further in this particular chapter. May God bless you and keep you is my prayer.